we'll be doing is we'll be taking a look at simple and compound interest. Today you're going to learn about how to com, how to basically compute simple interest and compound interest. So we're kind of reviewing what we talked about in the first two units to make sure we understand all these concepts. The keywords that we're going to talk about are simple interest, future value, principal, creditor, discount, all these different things, and a thing called growth factor. Now, like we talked before, we came up with the concept called principal. The principal is the money that we have at the beginning, the start, or before the interest. We always said it was the stuff that was the start. And then the simple interest is the interest that's paid on just the principal. Now, when we call it, when we talk about a thing called the amount, we're talking about what happens with when we add the principal plus the interest. So that's the total amount of the money after we've made our investment. When we talk about compound interest, interest is paid on the principal and the accumulated interest. Now, let's go over these charts that we have here. One is for simple interest and the other is for compound interest. Now, let's focus on the part of the sheet that talks about simple interest. Our initial problem has 5% per year simple interest. So when we have simple interest, what's happening is we have our initial amount of money, which is 2000 And when we put that money, the year is zero. There is no interest that's accumulated. Now, when we go and calculate the interest for every year, we end up ending up. We end up always multiplying the amount, the principal, the principal, times 0 0.05 as a decimal, and we get our answer. Okay, and we do that over and over again. And when we look at the tabulation or the addition of all of the money for the interest that's a total of $300 over three years. And you'll notice that the amount of money keeps increasing every year. And if you look here, the 2,300 bucks, that's what money we have at the end of our investment. So essentially what we're doing is we're always multiplying the interest by the initial amount of money that we started at the beginning of the entire process. We do not apply it to the interest or any amount of money from before. It's always the starting amount of money. So in this case, every year we're multiplying the interest by the original amount and just tacking it on. So in essence, we have I, the interest, equaling P, times the rate times the time in years. Now, let's talk about compound interest. We said compound interest basically is paid on the principal and the compound interest. So let's see what that means by using our magic pen. So, do, 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 do. So now imagine that we have a starting amount of $2,000. And what happens is we always calculate the interest based on the amount plus the principal. Sorry, the principal plus the interest. Now, the interest for my first year is $100. So I'm going to take that $100 and I'm going to add it to $2,000. Then when I go to calculate the interest for the next year, I have to include the interest as the new principal for the next year. For the second year, the interest is going to be 2100 times 0 0.005. Bit 105, so we add that to the initial amount of 1200 bucks, which gives us 2205. And we do, and so we do that continually all the way down. So every time we get our 
amount, we move it down. It's imagine that's the principle of our new interest calculation. And that is what compound interest is all about. Now, and so now we studied this equation to represent what was going on here. A is equal to P1 plus I to the N. Now, since this equation A equals P1 plus I to the N, the 1 plus I would represent what we would call the growth factor. So if we actually took a look at this, we actually multiplied each of these numbers going all the way down this chart, the amounts by, sorry, the principles for each year, times 1.05. So that means this 1 plus I is a growth factor of 1.05% to calculate the next amount. Now, let's continue. Let's see what happens when we double the interest rate. So when we double the interest rate for the initial amount of $2,000. So for the first year in our simple interest, we have 2,000 times 0 0.120. And we end up with $2,200 interest. Now, that's what we expect. We increase the interest. We should be able to double the interest, right? So, but the thing is with the simple interest, if you notice, all the previous interest rates were still 100 after we calculated. So this is also equal to 200, and this is also equal to 200. It gives us a total amount of $600. So after the, after the first year is completed, we're going to have 2200 then 2400 and then 2600 by the time we get to the third year so let's compare compound interest so if you think about this when we double the interest rate okay we double the interest earned for simple interest right now let's see what happens with our compound interest so remember that every time our interest was 10%, it's going to be 1.10, just like we had our 1.1, 1 1.05 before because it was 5%. So now instead of 2,000, we get 2,200, then 2,420, then this. So now we end up with a total of $2,662 money, which means our interest is that number minus 2,000, which gives us 662. So for simple interest, if we double the interest, then we literally double the interest earned. But if we're talking about compound interest, right? If we're talking about compound interest, the interest is doubled. Therefore, it's going to be more than doubled when we see when we enter when we do compound interest so compound interest is way more powerful than simple interest for growing money so now let's take a look at this example that we have here example three of our lesson talks about julio julio wants to invest five thousand dollars in an account right that earns simple interest at 8.25 percent per year how much would he earn in four years if all this stuff was invested it's compounded as well so let's figure out what our interest is for five years so let's call that part a so if i take i is equal to prt i've got i equaling i don't know what that is p is five thousand and then our rate is zero point zero eight two five now the number of years is four okay so now when we substitute that in we end up with this. I equals 5,000 times all that times 4, which gives us this. So Julio earns this amount of money. Now, if I wanted to find out the total amount of money that I made, I would just go and add it up, right? So let's go and find the total amount. So the total amount is basically A equals P plus I. So we end up with that amount of money. Now, if you think about it, we could find out how much more. We know that the simple interest is going to be less than the compound interest. That's what we believe. So let's see what happens when we do this. So how much more would he earn in four years? So let's see. All right. So we use our numbers that we had before because it's earned 
And when we compound something annually, we don't change anything with our i or our n. Now let's substitute. Substituting in, you get this equation, which means a is equal to 6,865.65. In the end, so, so the total at the end is this. So now, if I wanted to find the interest, all I would do is this, right? I would go and subtract the big number minus the start to get that amount of money. Now, in order to figure out which of these is better, all we have to do is look at the interest that was made or we look at the total amounts that were made, as you can see here and here and here and here. So it's like you have to compare either the interests or you compare the total amount. So in the end, the better deal would be compounding. Okay, so that's scenario B here. And in essence, I would have $215.65 more. And that's by either subtracting both interests or subtracting both amounts to find the difference in price. Now, let's take a look at example four. So the graph that you have here, shows what the two investments look like, okay? So if I look at these two investments, which one is this one? This one just grows in an exponential pattern. So that represents compound interest, and this one here represents simple interest, which is linear, and then compound interest, which is exponential. Your homework is found on these homework pages, which are attached to this worksheet. And your simple interest practice is found here. So just complete the simple interest practice, the compound interest practice, and the present value practice. That's your